Jackson here, Mike, and you see right there, the outside prevail with Eric Almarola who takes advantage of Ryan Blaney maybe being a little too conservative into that first turn. But look, now he overdrives it far, far off of turn two, uh, turn four, and now Marola slips up the racetrack, almost losing the lead. Austin Dillon may have a flat. He's drifted way toward the back of the field here as we get rolling in Martinsville. Al Marola and Blaney. And here is Dillon. Yeah, he has a he has a pretty big issue. I think you're right, Mike. Looks like a tire issue. That car's all over the track. He started 22nd. He is now next to last. He he can barely even keep it on on the bottom of the racetrack. So I'll be curious to see if he just tries to ride this out, hoping for a caution or gets to the pit road. Chase Elliott ninth. Here comes Harvick for 10th. And when you have a car way up on the outside. As Alex Bowman is right now, you can get freight train, Jeff, just as badly as if you're at Daytona or Talladega. Yeah, I mean, it's not always about aerodynamics, Mike, but it, it definitely, right now, we don't know what groove or what, oh, is, here's the issue. Oh, boy, I got de debris all over the place from that tire that went down on the three of Austin Dillon. Caution flag on lap five. Now, uh, Austin yeah. and his wife are expecting their first son this week. Uh, it's a boy. He'll be named Ace, and A.J. Allmendinger is standing by in case Austin gets the call and needs to head uh, back down to Winston-Salem. And, and typically what happens in these situations, you know, first lap of a race, track slick, uh, maybe two cars come together. I didn't even see any tire marks, but I definitely saw the, the yeah, so I think after the tire went down, it actually caused some of that damage I was going to point out in front of the right rear tire. But it, I mean, the tire looks completely clean. It's hard to say. And then the side of the car does. It's hard to say what would have caused that because it doesn't look like he made contact with anybody. Let's ride with him on the start. Oh, well, yeah, right away. Right away, that car started having an issue. So, not sure if he ran something over or were they just low on air pressure and it caused some kind of an issue to make that tire go, go down. The paper clip, two drag strips, two U turns. Let's see how Eric Almarola can do as we take the green flag in the inside lane. side of the 14 and Clint Boyer just rolls right on by him. I've seen that a lot. Look at how quickly Clint Boyer wants to close the door on Chase Elliott as Chase Elliott pushes the issue and gets to the inside. The corners are concrete. The straightaways are asphalt. And at second place, Joey Logano. Getting under Ryan Blaney. Martin Truex right behind him. One thing we know for sure is this track is going to change drastically from these opening laps to what it's going to be like just here in the next 50 or 60 laps, but especially by the end. Uh, you know, I, it looked to me like Brian Blaney was about to get to the rear bumper, maybe made a little bit of contact with our leader, Eric Almarola, and then Joey Logano made contact with Blaney, sent him up the racetrack, and now Blaney's stuck in that outside lane. And Newman with a bad tire rub in 21st place as we watch this battle for fourth. The Bush brothers taking on Ryan Blaney. And I, I promise you, nobody's going to cut Ryan Blaney a break. When, when you see a car in that outside lane getting shuffled back, you drive into the corner just a little bit further and you stick your nose in there as much as you can because you want to get that position. That's an easy position as we see Chase Elliott clear Ryan Blaney. Now Ryan Blaney back in line. 
Yeah, good gap there after Chase Elliott. Now Brad Keselowski is caught on the outside and he's dropped seven spots from the restart. Well, Joey Logano, we haven't seen a big glow from the brake rotors and we haven't seen him put a wheel wrong since taking the lead. Very early on, he's having a Sunday drive on a Wednesday night here. Well, he sure is. Of course, uh, when you have clean air like Joey Logano does, uh, being out front, you're certainly not going to work those tires and work those uh, brakes as much as some of your competitors behind you. But as he comes into lap traffic, especially some of the better uh, lap cars, it's going to make Joey work a little bit harder, make him abuse those tires and those brakes, and they might start blowing. Now, that's a pretty good go there. Of course, it's going to get darker. Those lights are really going to start to show themselves even more. I can't wait for this place to be under total darkness and, and see those brakes glow then. He's trying to put Cole Custer two laps down. So right now we have 11 cars one lap behind the leader and then four more two laps down. Mike I can't tell you how difficult this track as a rookie is one of the most difficult to learn when you have zero practice you have zero ability to come and test at this track as the caution is out. Timmy Hill is stalled in the middle of pit road. Well I, I think there's a huge sigh of relief for many drivers out there because I think this tire wear is still excessive at this stage of the race and we saw some drivers that started coming forward right away but they started falling quick. Pace car comes out picks up Joey Logano Clint Boyer Kurt Busch and we have 19 cars on the lead lap one of which is the seven of Jimmy Johnson. Larry let's take a look at tonight's right combination sponsored by Subway. Well the numbers speak for themselves. Jimmy Johnson and Martinsville Speedway just look right there nine wins 19 top five finishes over 2800 laps led here and with his Martinville numbers and the way he and his crew chief Cliff, Cliff Daniels they've been running so far this season I think they can find the subway right combination to add to those numbers and end that 105 race winless streak. Thanks Larry. 17 laps to go in this stage Larry would you pit under this caution. Well I think you've, you're going to see the leaders pit but what I was thinking about all those drivers that are a lap down right now like Brad Keselowski like Kyle Busch like Denny Hamlin take the wave around even on those older tires you're not going to get lapped and that will put you back in the lead lap but I would say most of the of the lead lap cars will pit Mike just because of how much fall off and as Regan has been reporting the tire wear. Getting ready to restart and Corey LaJoy is the race leader. He chose not to pit. So he is out front with Bubba Wallace. Joey Logano and Clint Boyer. Eight drivers took the wave around. Now you can do that if you're one lap down on a caution as long as you are in front of all the lead lap cars and behind the safety car. With LaJoy not pitting only eight of the approximately 15 cars one lap down were running on the racetrack in front of LaJoy. So only those eight got the wave around. The drivers who did not pit and were trapped one lap down include Nemechek, Kyle Busch, Suarez, Almirola, Bell, Custer, Yaley, Poole, and Sorensen. They did not get to come around and get back on the lead lap. Now some some of those lead lap car, lap down cars took tires on that caution. Others did not like Kyle Busch and Suarez and Amarola. So right now Kyle Busch is in the position to get the free pass if he can stay there for the next what 10 yeah, 10 laps. Coming to the Geico restart zone. And Corey LaJoy takes off for Bubba Wallace. Wallace on the outside. <laughs> Whoa. Boyer takes him three wide in the first turn. Clint Boyer threaded the needle between cars and we're three wide again. Wow. Yeah, a little bit of contact between the 19 of Truex and Bubba Wallace. And they're pushing and shoving coming to the end of this stage. 
Joey Logano going by our leader, Corey LaJoy. Riding with Clint Boyer, our Ford Performance Cam. Looking at Corey LaJoy. And that's what four fresh tires will do for you. Kind of a weird rattle when oh. you're on board there at the 14 of Boyer. Last week when he had that, that was a tire that was unraveling. You don't, you, you don't want to hear those kinds of sounds at any racetrack, so hopefully it's nothing too serious for Boyer. It sounded like the ratchet in the but rear end, didn't it? That's what I thought it? at first, Mike. I thought it was the ratchet. But it, it was odd that it continued all the way down the straightaway. Well, that's some contact three wide here as Kevin Harvick tries to go by Corey LaJoy. They make contact. Kurt Busch takes advantage. Yeah. A damage to the right front fender on Kevin Harvick's car. Harvick tried to use the chrome horn on LaJoy and ended up losing a spot for his trouble. And now he's going to lose some more as Harvick in the four is stuck on the outside. Now he'll get in behind De Benedetto. Or excuse me, in front of De Benedetto. You see Bubba Wallace working hard, trying to not let four tires on the 19 car. Mark Truex Jr. take advantage of those two right side tires that Bubba was that he received on that last pit stop. So Corey LaJoy has dropped 11 spots for not stopping, not taking tires, but he's probably going to finish this stage ahead of where he would have if he'd pitted with the rest of the cars he was running with. That's LaJoy in the 32, third generation racer. Rookie Tyler Reddick to his inside in the number eight. Oh, oh a little contact with Chase Elliott, Kurt Busch. More contact off of turn two. Jeff, it's a contact sport when you're in Martinsville. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to see a lot of that. Two laps to go in stage one at the end of stage one. Stage points to the top ten. And we'll get a caution. And everybody can regroup and try again. To Benedetto, Byron, Priest, Busher all fighting for top ten spots. Logano with a three-quarter second lead on board. Probably oh, doing a nice job just holding that bottom line, trying to make it difficult for Kurt Bush. If he can hold on to that fifth position here and close out this stage, which it looks like he might, that's uh, that was a big gain for that team. Joey Logano makes it look easy, gets his third stage win of the season, and the final stage point goes to the 24 of William Byron. Now, there is a commitment box right there at the entrance to pit road, and if you are going to pit, like the 43 car, all four tires must be to the inside of that. Truex's were not. Neither were Austin Dillon's. He also had that penalty. So it's Logano and Boyer from the front row. And once again, Joey Logano scoots away. Jimmy Johnson up for third. Starting to see those lights glisten off these paint schemes out there, Mike. Michael McDowell in the 34 to the inside of DiBenedetto. This is the Wood Brothers home track for that number 21. They're just about oh, a 20 minute ride to the west in Stewart, Virginia. <laughs> a, a great run by DeBenedetto on the Wood Brothers and a great run for Michael McDowell. Battling on the inside for fourth position. Harvick looking way to the inside here. Oh, He's going to stuff boy, it in there. I did not think that was going to open up enough for him to slide into the inside but he did that was one stuffed pizza into that corner <laughs> and Harvick pops out with the possession sixth place now William Byron in the 24 going after McDowell and Kurt Busch in the one to follow but just as I was bragging on Michael McDowell in just one lap he gets pushed to the outside by Kevin Harvick. Now he's going to get freight trained out there. Look at the line of cars that are going to try to go nose to tail and keep Michael McDowell to the outside. For 
further back, Corey LaJoy to the inside of Ryan Priest and Bubba Wallace. These three keeping uh, close company. And McDowell gets in line. And he gets a little bump and nudge there from the nine of Elliott. And Elliott to the inside. Along with the 88 of Alex Bowman, who's back on the lead lap in 10. Let's go back up to first and second. Logano leading. Boyer, six tenths of a second back. Regan. Well, it's a good thing for Clint Boyer right now that he's not having to work too hard in traffic. That last pit stop, he asked for an ice bag because his air conditioner to his helmet went out. Basically, that's the fresh air that the driver can get to his face. He has none of that right now on what is actually a very muggy night here in Virginia right now. Yeah, and, and Regan, you brought it up. It's a very humid night. These drivers are used to running Martinsville. We even saw this in Atlanta last week. You're used to seeing these drivers run these races in much cooler conditions, not used to all this heat, especially if your you know, fans can't be turned on because you have battery or alternator issues. Now you lose all the cooling, and you're going to have to pack that ice in around those drivers like you saw Austin Dillon doing. I think he still has a bag or two in there. Dillon in 34th place, two laps back. Well, I saw Denny Hamlin on the left of the screen, and I, I just think figured. I think he finished second, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, second yep. place. I don't know if it's his first race or just in his rookie season. Joey Logano's got company. Nine-time Martinsville winner Jimmy Johnson in the 48 has closed right to the rear bumper and is filling up the rearview mirror of Logano's Mustang. I was going to say, if Joey Logano wants another one of those grandfather clocks, he might have to go through seven-time, nine-time, whatever you want to call it, Jimmy Johnson, but he is so tough when you put him into this position, especially at Martinsville. You know, Mike and Jeff, I don't want to get too out far in front of my skis. We still got 300 laps to go, but when you look at that 22 car, remember the crew chief swap. And Paul Wolf is now on that 22 car, and he was with Brad Keselowski last year when Brad won this race in the spring and led 446 laps. So I guess there's special courses for drivers, special courses for crew chiefs too. Paul was a good short track racer in the Bush North Series before coming south and making his way onto the top of the crew chief box. Watching this line that Jimmy Johnson's running right now, watch Joey Logano. Now he might lose the lead here, but Jimmy was diamond in the racetrack, straddling that. You see that where the rubber has laid down from those right side tires. Joey not going to give up that lead yet, but Jimmy was actually straddling that, using a little bit different line as Joey was running right around the bottom. We'll see if Joey can't hold him off on this outside. Maybe learn something about that up, uh, higher group that's maybe starting to come in a little bit. Now look at that red and white striping down to the inside. That is not just paint. That is a legitimate curb down there, and you don't want to bounce your front tires off that, or it'll kick you right back out into traffic. Jimmy Johnson to the lead. Something we've not been able to say that much in 2020. But in his final season, the seven time series champion out front at a track where he has won nine times. I mean, we, we have not seen, and even Jimmy talked about it, uh, you know, opening up our show here that he loves this racetrack. He's had so much success here, has a lot of confidence here, but the last couple of years just has not been a track for Jimmy Johnson. They just have not been able to find that setup, but his teammates have been pretty successful. They went to the notes, and that's what a veteran driver, a champion driver like Jimmy Johnson does. You know that this is a track that he can run well at. You got to go into those that notebook, look at every angle that you could possibly find that magic you once, once had, and right now he has it. He has had uh, 14 career wins on NASCAR short tracks in 109 starts, nine of them coming right here. The cars that are stuck one lap down because they can't pass the leader to get back on the lead lap include Kyle Busch, Matt Kenseth, Denny Hamlin, Eric Almirola. Now, Kurt Busch ran in the top five a good part of this race. He's currently 11th, Regan. 
Yeah, Mike, and he just started complaining about something that's that's been a problem in the past at Martinsville. It hasn't been tonight until I heard him say it. It's a wobble getting into the corner, but the wobble is at the transition from the asphalt to the concrete. Jeff, I, I've had that problem here before. It does nothing good for your confidence in the race car when that thing wobbles. That bump's worse than it looks. Well, it is a, a big transition. You're right, Regan, as you come from the pavement onto the concrete and from the concrete back onto the pavement. And I think what's catching a lot of these drivers off, off you know, track is that, that, look how little that rear spoiler is. That rear spoiler is so tiny. There's very little downforce pushing the back of that car into the racetrack as a transition onto that concrete. And I think that if you're a little loose, right now you're really loose. to go now in stage two then we'll get a caution flag at the end of the stage for everybody to make pit stops. Jeff I've seen more cars three wide tonight <laughs> than I think I ever have in any race at Martinsville. And I'm loving it and, and call it the lights call it the, the small spoiler but I think the combination of Goodyear the configuration on these race cars aerodynamically and under the lights and I am loving this short track action here at night on a Wednesday. Jimmy Johnson leading in a Chevy. Ryan Blaney now second in a Ford. Where did the Toyotas go? Martin Truex is their highest runner right now and he is 16th. In fact he is the only Toyota on the lead lap. And he had that issue coming to pit road that got him really far behind. He is making ground. I mean, he's holding steady. He's staying on the lead lap. He's passing cars. So it seemed to be different than what some of the other JGR Toyotas are dealing with. Meanwhile, Clint Boyer, who restarted second, now without much drive off the corner, Jimmy Johnson, you can see easily, going to put him a lap down. And what surprised us, we talked about some of the cars that came in, like Ryan Blaney, like Kevin Harvick, that have a little bit fresher tires, but Jimmy Johnson's not one of them. Jimmy Johnson actually has the same number of tires, uh, amount of laps on his tires as, as uh, we just saw Clint Boyer. Now, why is this such a bump and bang battle? It's because Clint Boyer and John Hunter Nemechek are battling to be the first car one lap down, so when the stage ends, one of them will get the free pass. Yep. Only one. Well, yeah, until Jimmy goes and passes Corey LaJoy, the next car that could go a lap down. Don't spoil my story. <laughs> it was a great one. It still is. Look it's, at this action. Oh. Oh, you see John Aaron Nemechek get really loose here because here comes second place runner Ryan Blaney coming through. So Nemechek, if he can tuck in on Blaney's bumper, can complete the pass of Boyer, but maybe he's just not as good on the inside. We'll see. Here he goes. It's loose almost. I don't know if John Hunter. I think he bounced it off the curb. Yeah, I think he may have put that curb a little bit, but he certainly made some contact with Boyer. The Boyer was complaining about drive off very early in this run, and, and that's a sign that the tires are starting to wear out. Usually the left rear tire creates a lot of that drive off, so no surprise to me that he's fallen this much after the, that many laps on the tires. Now you saw Kyle Busch in that battle. He is not part of the equation for scoring. He's two laps down after early issues brushing the wall, making extra pit stops. Here's eighth and ninth. Chase Elliott and Kurt Busch 12 seconds back of the lead. And here's Kevin Harvick in fourth with Alex Bowman relegating Harvick to fifth. Kevin Harvick using a lot of front brake there. A lot of front brake and very little left rear brake, Mike. And that, that's a balance issue. When you have this little downforce on the cars getting in, even though it is a short track, you still want that downforce. So I wouldn't be surprised if they've got some bias that, like Larry McReynolds talked about, shifted to the right rear and to that left front and right front. That will help keep that car nice and straight under braking getting into the corner. And now all of John Hunter Nemechek's work is going for naught because Jimmy Johnson 
puts Corey LaJoy one lap down and now LaJoy is in the free pass position. With five to go in the stage. I don't want to bring it up Mike but. <laughs> oh go ahead. <laughs> De Benedetto is the next one so Corey LaJoy hoping that Jimmy Johnson doesn't get to Matt De Benedetto here in the next three or four laps but I think he's going to. It's a moving target. <laughs> it's all very dynamic. With four to go in stage two. Fifteen cars on the lead lap if De Benedetto goes a lap down here. And you can see how difficult it is for De Benedetto to put the throttle down and get the drive off the corner. That car's really sliding on the exit. Just so little you can do as a driver to keep yourself on the lead lap when you don't have that drive off and that grip on the exit. Now the next car on the lead lap is the 19 of Martin Truex ahead. So De Benedetto might be safe as the free pass position. And Mike, if I'd have told you this afternoon by the halfway point of the race that three Joe Gibbs drivers would be a lap down and the fourth one would be on the verge by the halfway point, you'd have probably went to the bosses and said, Larry Mack can't do the broadcast. <laughs> I think he's been kicking back on Grandpa's cough medicine today. <laughs> Hey, watch this battle between Corey LaJoy and the 32 and the 21 at the Benedetto. This is for that final uh, spot to stay on the lead lap or one Whoa. lap down to get the free pass. Bump, bump, and run. Not going to happen before they get to the line. Jimmy Johnson wins stage two. William Byron had the right front tire roll out of his pit box uncontrolled. And Reed Sorensen was too fast entering pit road, so they'll both be starting at the tail end. Jimmy Johnson, Ryan Blaney will share the front row. Johnson the, as the leader elects the inside. Then Logano and Bowman, Harvick and Wallace. Stage three is on. Wow, look at Ryan Blaney on the outside of Jimmy Johnson. Going to fight hard to get that clean air and get out front. Mid corner, Jimmy's got him. Let's see if Ryan gets that run off the corner. And they're still even right into the next one. Yeah, Jimmy was aggressive into the center, turns three and four. But down here, one and two, Blaney's got a little bit of an advantage on that outside. Now, exit of turn two is where Blaney might be able to seal the deal. Close, but not close enough. Jimmy's not going to let him get this easy. He's going to stick his nose right to that left rear tire. Now Blaney's got the lead. And here comes Joey Logano also. Team Penske Mustangs 1 2. Blaney, who has not been to victory lane this year, and Joey Logano, who already has two trophies. Now remember, under caution, they pick up all that rubber that lays down on the racetrack. So you're going to see a different looking racetrack, and then you're going to see that rubber start to lay down. And again, we'll see this track change. Oh, low contact there. How about Brad Keselowski? Fell back early in this race, just like his teammate Ryan Blaney. Now he's up there battling Alex Bowman in the 88 Chevrolet. Yeah, Kozlowski got the free pass at lap 130 on the caution flag at the end of stage one and has fought his way back. Oh, uh -oh. got to be real careful there. That right front fender has flared out on the two from the contact to the left rear of the 88. That could easily cut that tire down on Alex Bowman. And Bowman has a tire rubbing on the left rear. You can see that, that little piece in the front, lower front fender there just sticking out like a, like a knife. And, and there's that tire rub also on the 88. And also the six of Ryan Newman after contact from Corey LaJoy. I mean that, and Ryan Priest. <laughs> that's classic Martinsville where you're trying to, to make it really difficult for that driver to get that run, get that uh, late breaking move into the turn. So you hold him low. And Corey LaJoy said, no, not this time. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay diving into the corner and, and 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 I'm not moving and ended up moving Ryan Newman out of the way. 
Larry, this final stage is 240 laps, almost as long as the first two combined. How do you want to play this for a fuel and tire stops? Yeah, Mike, I think with the give up we're seeing now that the rubber's down, it's not as near as much as it was in the beginning of the race. The last thing you want to do is make a green flag pit stop early at Martinsville because you will go two plus laps down. So you want to run this thing as far as you can, which remember the fuel window is roughly somewhere around 150 laps. You do not want to short pit at Martinsville. Okay. And this battle is all four position. Bubba Wallace in the 43 and eighth. Tyler Reddick ninth. Martin Truex 10th. What's iconic about that Bubba Wallace car is the number and not just that it's 43. But the design of that number is just as it was when Richard Petty was a rookie and then went on to win 200 career victories in the NASCAR Cup Series. By far the all time record. David Pearson second on that list with 105. Richard Petty's 200 will forever be the standard. the battle for fourth or third position Kevin Harvick obviously Jimmy Johnson not as much speed in the early portion of this run he just lets Kevin Harvick and now here comes Chase Elliott to the outside he, he just let Kevin Harvick go right on by obviously Jimmy Johnson feels something in this race car in these early stages or you know these early laps that he doesn't want to push the issue he wants to run his own race and race the racetrack for the lead Roger Penske's two Fords swap it. <laughs> oh. Now, is that just a little hey teammate? Or did Joey maybe put the bumper to Ryan Blaney back in one and two before that move was made? There, uh, the third Penske car, Brad Kozlowski, is sixth. Penske one, two. Kevin Harvick third. Want to take a look at that last pass for tonight's clean pass the pass for the lead. Here's another look at it. There's a tiny little bump there. See Brian Blaney gets loose as Joey Logano goes to the inside and then Brian Blaney's going to repay that favor a little tap. <laughs> hey that's as clean of a pass as you're going to get here at Martinsville. I agree. One hundred seventy seven laps to go at Martinsville Speedway Ryan Blaney out in front of teammate Brad Keselowski by a second. Well Mike I know how good Jimmy Johnson is because I raced with him as a teammate for many years. But guess what the last time he led more than 60 laps in a race was in 2017 at Bristol and he won. He's led 70 tonight. He's going to go to victory lane again. Well, Jeff, I know how good Brad Keselowski is at Martinsville because I've been watching him for the last few years. He came in here with three consecutive top five finishes, and the last time a driver won back-to-back -back spring races, Rusty Wallace back in the 90s. Larry, Joey Logano might have a few enemies on the racetrack, but fortunately none of them are around him right now at Martinsville. He's got his teammates around him. He's sizing them up as we speak. Joey Logano, later tonight, he's going to be your winner. Caution out for a spin out with Ryan Blaney leading. He has three Cup Series victories, but none with new crew chief Todd Gordon. Win number four, first one of the season tonight for third generation star Blaney. Those are your Credit One Bank. Ones to watch, and there is why the caution is out. Texas driver David Starr takes a spin at Martinsville Speedway off the bumper of Eric Jones. Well, I know how that happened. Eric Jones could see where he was going because if you notice he had some damage. He ran into the back of somebody and knocked that hood up pretty high. So hard to see those cars in front of you when you've got that hood. Yeah, I saw that that happened oh, 150 laps ago. <laughs> it's been like that a while. And that will be only the sixth caution flag of the night here in Martinsville. Clint Boyer will get the free pass. First car one lap down in 17th place. So that means on the restart there will be 16 lead lap cars plus Boyer. Top 18 cars on the lead lap. the 
lead. Kozlowski in second. Jimmy Johnson looking on the inside with Chase Elliott high. Well, Mike, I'm really anxious to watch Brad Kozlowski hit two car. I mean, he has driven so, from so far back and looked to be one of the best cars at the end of that last run. Curious to see what he can do with his teammate Joey Logano here as he's in second place. Chase Elliott trying to move up a spot. Jimmy Johnson trying to hold him. And he'll, he'll get that spot. Boy, Chase Elliott jumped in the throttle right there off the turn four. Martinsville under the lights, crank it up. such a tough place to be in if you're Joey Logano. I think that he actually has a little more speed in this Pennzoil Ford, but he doesn't want to use it up trying to hold these guys off. So just make it very difficult for them to get by. Try to also, you know, keep your car driving really straight and maintain those tires and brakes. Oh, gosh, that's <laughs> close. And that, that's all you got to do is just squeeze your teammate or whoever's trying to make that pass, just squeeze them a little bit into the corner, make their life very difficult. Larry, you said earlier you want to run this stint as long as you can before coming in for fuel and tires under green. How, how far can you go? Yeah, I've just been doing the math on that, uh, Mike. They pitted at lap 328, and they can go to about 15 or 25 laps to go in the race. So they've got a ways they can go, but I don't think, I'm pretty sure in saying, you can't make it without stopping. I, I, you know, you're going to go till the rubber is gone, until you're down to the cords on these tires. I don't know if Joey Logano's going to have a rear bumper on that car if we go that far in this run. There, I thought that Joey Logano kind of put a defensive move there on Keslaski, and I didn't think Keslaski was anticipating it, but he was able to get it slowed down. And now in heavy traffic once again, and these leaders don't want to fool around. Right now, it's a three-car battle for the lead. It could soon be four. And I think it might be Mike because while all this is going on, these guys are battling it out. Don't look now, but there he is, Mark Truex Jr. just came into the picture. Heavy traffic ahead. Denny Hamlin and teammate Eric Jones side by side right in front of the leaders. Will that clog the track up enough for Truex to come to the party? And Mike, you know Denny Hamlin at 11. He does not want to go a second lap down. That pretty much would end his night. That's Hamlin in the 11 just in front of the leader Logano. Tyler Reddick, Ryan Blaney, 13th and 14th. Yeah, Blaney fighting back from all those issues on pit road. He's had, he, I think Blaney's passed more cars tonight, Mike, than anybody in the field. Yep. So Blaney, oh, they're uh, going to get three wide for the lead here going into three with Corey LaJoy. They were passing Howe. Quinn Howe. And jo uh, Denny Hamlin. And look at that, Truex is able to get by. Chase Elliott. Kozlowski oh. to the inside. Oh, oh Joey yeah. gets squeezed and held up behind Corey LaJoy. Yeah, that was just a per perfect uh, you know, time to make that aggressive move by Brad Kozlowski. Gets to the inside of Logano, uses a lap car to pin him, and now 
Here comes Truex. LaJoy trying to stay the first car one lap down, but here are the other lead lap cars. Truex and Logano second and third going by. Yeah, coming up on those lap cars cost Joey Logano a couple of positions. There could be more. Can't blame Corey LaJoy. He's got to fight hard. He's had a great night. He's drove a great race. And you can't blame him for fighting hard trying to stay on this lead lap. Here's number 32, the first car one lap down in 18th. Chase Elliott to the inside now. This allowed Keslowski to get away a little bit. Three tenths of a second. Yeah, I'm really excited to watch this battle up front with Keselowski and Truist because right now they are the two best race cars on the track. Well, Jeff, that was the two best race cars in 2019. Those two drivers in our two races last year led 900 of the 1,000 laps, of course, each won a race. Well, did you see how quick the 19 car, Mark Truex Jr.'s car, was able to roll through the center? He might not have that entry speed that the two car Keselowski does, but boy, does that car get through the center of the corner. Look at him going to go after that lead. Truex, the New Jersey driver inside of Michigan's Keselowski for the lead. Boy, he made that look easy, Mike. That did not take long. Of course, Mark Truex Jr. was able to close up on this battle here with these two or three drivers because they came into lap traffic. They're battling one another, but then Truex was able to get right by him quickly. to go at Martinsville Speedway in South Central Virginia. There's your leader Martin Truex. Cole Custer laps down moving to the inside. Then he's got Ryan Priest to deal with as well as Daniel Suarez and uh, his lead of nearly a second may disappear with an on rushing Brad Keselowski. Keselowski is led for five laps in the number two. Life never easy, even if you're the leader, Mike. You're gonna navigate through lap traffic, tra track changes, competitors find something behind you and save a little bit to close in. Joey Logano led half the race. Was the leader at the end of stage one. Picked up a bonus point for doing so. Chase Elliott. In fourth place, he's a three and a half back. Chevy teammate Alex Bowman in fifth, five and a half back. And Jimmy Johnson, who led 70 laps and for a while drove away from the field, currently is in sixth place, six and a half seconds back. Regan? Mike, Jimmy came over the radio a little while ago, absolutely puzzled as to what's happened to this race car. He was so fast not too long ago, doesn't know why he's lost the speed. The car's a little snug in the middle. That's really the only thing he can say about it at this moment. This team dug really deep in their notes to work on setup for this year, too. Cliff Daniels told me that they went all the way back to 2008 studying Jimmy's trends and everything that he's done over those course of those years to get ready for this weekend. Wow. Looking for an edge. Sunday's winner in Atlanta, Kevin Harvick, in seven, seven and a half back. I mean, having kind of a Kevin Harvick Martinsville day, you know, this has never been one of his best racetracks, um, and, and, but yet he's so good, and this team is so good, they're always going to put a solid performance in. And Matt Benedetto for the hometown team, the Wood Brothers, who for years and decades raced out of Stewart, Virginia, now down in Concord, North Carolina, getting passed by Ryan Newman. Having a solid top 10 run and the number six for Roush Fenway. <laughs> Another solid great run for Ryan Newman. Newman's teammate Chris Busher. Nails down a top 10 spot with 106 laps to go. In 11th Ryan Blaney who led 34 laps tonight. And has now picked up seven spots on the restart after a bad pit stop. 
Finding out what life is like coming through traffic and having to be aggressive passing all those cars. Bubba Wallace for 12th trying to hold off. Arizona's Michael McDowell Chevy versus Ford battle here for 12th. And that's an important position to Bubba because his best career finish is 13th here at Martin's. Turn two, car in the wall. Quinn House. The rookie running uh, 18 laps down in that uh, brightly painted Chevy. Home race for Quinn Half. But he brings out caution flag number seven. We are back under green. Minus Austin Dillon, who has been helped from his car. And with the limited number of personnel the teams are allowed to have here at the track, there is apparently no relief driver available. Reed Sorensen is out of the race, so is Timmy Hill. But not sure if they are still here or able to hop aboard the number three for Richard Childress Racing. Well, we question with knocking out that quarter panel or that crush panel early on in this race. I mean, the first lap, whether or not Austin Hill can make it all the way, hung in there a long time, but it finally got the best of him and this heat and humidity. Truex with the lead, Logano second, Keslowski, Bowman, Elliott, and here's Jimmy Johnson trying to hold off Kevin Harvick. Harvick under fire from DiBenedetto loses the spot. Yeah, clearly, I think Harvick had some kind of an issue there coming off the corner because he was right there with Jimmy Johnson, then he lost a bunch of spots. That team's been having some battery issues. Ryan Blaney trying to get back to the front here goes to the outside of Johnson this move. Wow. Jimmy checks up early goes to the bottom and Blaney just goes right by him on the outside. My goodness. While all that was going on they were three wide into turn number three again. Bubba Wallace on the outside, William Byron in the middle, and somebody's going to lose. <laughs> and that was Bubba. Bubba. Eight tires are better than four, right? Yes. Now, during the last pit stop, we're told Bubba and Byron had some contact on pit road. Man. Tenth place. Bubba, I told you he's going to lay down some qualifying laps, and he's going to lay oh. the bumper to Jimmy Johnson. to the insides might have tickled the curb slipped up just a little bit there. Eric Almirola slow in turn two and he's going to make it off the track. Three to go. And I have a feeling Cole Custer was on pit road. I don't yes. know if it was a tire issue or dealing with that battery issue. Yeah he has fresh tires. So he has fresh tires. That's why he's got a lot of speed right now. Yeah, he's got to let these guys race, though. Three to go. Out in front of Ryan Blaney by 4.4 seconds, though, is Martin Truex. For Joe Gibbs Racing and Toyota. Around the corner, the white flag waving. One lap to go. Still, after all these laps, just cut through the corners like that. Impressive run, impressive driving by Mark Truex Jr. Last fall, he hey, led every stage and got the win. Martin Truex wins Martinsville. Martin Truex Jr. Uh, wow, what a performance! You have a penalty early on in this race. Next thing we know here is the 19 car taking the lead again. It looked like the fall race all over again. What is it about you, this team in Martinsville? Yeah, we just, uh, you know, we've been working a long time uh, on trying to figure this place out. And um, just chipping away at it. You know, the last couple years we've been really strong. And, you know, 18 was a heartbreaker going, you know, at the end of the race there. You know, last year to get the win. And then, um, you know, this year, um, just hats off to the guys. We started the first run and blew, pushed the right front tire off, and we were terrible. So. Really good adjustments by the guys. Just want to thank all of them. Uh, Sirius XM, 
Bass Pro Auto Owners, everybody that makes this possible, TRD. Congrats to James on his first win. He's doing an awesome job. I'm really proud of him. But um, it's a big day for us. I want to say hi to all the fans at home. We definitely miss you. This just doesn't feel right, but uh, exciting to win for for sure. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.